I guess I should just start this video by answering the question posed in the title. What is a whipomorph? Put simply, Whipomorpha is the clade of animals that contains both Cetacea, the whales, and Hippopotamidae, the hippos. What this means is that whales and hippos are more closely related to each other than they are to any other animal. But how exactly are they related, and what was their common ancestor? To answer this question, let's step back and see how Whipomorpha diverged from other mammals. In my previous video, I explained that cats and dogs belong to the order Carnivora, which is part of the clade Ferrae, which also includes pangolins. Within the clade Scrotifera, which also includes bats and flying foxes, Ferrae belongs to the clade Ferrungulata. The first part of the name Ferrungulata, of course, refers to Ferrae, and the second part refers to Ferrae's sister clade Ungulata, which is the diverse clade of mammals with hooves. Surprisingly, it is this clade of animals that includes the whales, as we're about to discover. Ungulata branches into two separate orders, Perissodactyla, which includes horses, tapirs, and rhinos, and Artiodactyla, which includes pigs, camels, deer, cows, and others. These two orders are commonly identified by the hooves of the animals. Versidactyla is called the odd-toed ungulates because the animals in this group's weight is carried on their third toe, while their non-weight-bearing toes are either vestigial, absent, or present but don't serve much purpose. Conversely, Artiodactyla, the even-toed ungulates, support their weight on two toes. It is this group, the even-toed ungulates, that gave rise to the whales and hippos. First, though, there were several earlier branches of animals that separated from Artiodactyla. Tylopoda, the suborder that includes camels, llamas, and alpacas, diverged about 46 million years ago in the mid to late Eocene. Suina, the suborder of pigs and peccaries, diverged in the late Eocene. That takes us to Centrumenantia, a clade in the early Eocene that includes ruminants, entelodonts, an extinct family of North American omnivores commonly called hell pigs, or sometimes terminator pigs, and the whipomorphs. For a long while, it was uncertain where whales fit into the Tree of Life, until DNA sequencing placed them among the even-toed ungulates, and the study of morphological similarities between cetaceans and hippos showed that the two are closely related. There is one issue, however. Although we are able to trace back the lineage of whales over 50 million years to early artiodactyls, the fossil record of hippos goes cold only 15 million years ago. Because of this, the ancestry of hippos is what we call a ghost lineage, meaning there's a large gap in time where the presence and identity of the ancestral hippos are completely unknown. Although we do not know what the ancestor of hippos were between Zetrumenantia and the hippos living about 15 million years ago, we can attempt to piece together the puzzle by looking at the anatomy of the ancestors of cetaceans, whose fossil record is much more complete. To do this, we start by looking at Rowlids, such as Indohyus, who lived in the early Eocene about 47 million years ago. Although most likely not a direct ancestor to hippos, these early whipomorphs can give us a good idea of what ancestral hippos were like, as well as whales. Rowlids lived around what is now India and Pakistan, were omnivores, and show signs that they spent a good amount of time in the water, such as having heavy bones that allowed them to hide beneath the water surface, similar to modern hippos. Of course, these animals are also very different to modern whales and hippos, being around the size of a fox or raccoon and lacking the thick, blubbery skin that whales and hippos possess. Until more fossils are discovered, we will have to use our imaginations to determine how animals like these transitioned to the ancestral hippos that lived in Africa 15 million years ago, but we are able to follow their lineage and see how whales evolved from these unlikely ancestors. During the early Eocene, there was a family in Archaeoceti, a part of order of early whales, called Pachycetidae. These animals may have been the first cetaceans. Pachycetids still lacked most of the features seen in whales, but they possess several aquatic adaptations, such as a bone growth covering the middle ear called an involucrum, which is also present in whales. Rowlids and Pachycetids were likely only semi-aquatic, spending most of their lives on land and feeding in the water. Not long after the appearance of these animals, we saw greater adaptations for a fully aquatic lifestyle in cetaceans such as members of the family Remingtonacetidae. Remingtonacetids had long narrow snouts and a muscular tail, as well as short powerful hind limbs. They could still walk on land but were more adept at swimming and are a clear intermediary stage between their terrestrial ancestors and the fully aquatic whales that would later evolve. Proudocetids had even further aquatic adaptations, such as nasal openings that were located further up the snout. There are many genera of Proudocetids, such as Proudocetus, which had reduced hind flippers and tail flukes, while others lacked tail flukes and had functional hind limbs. These cetaceans all diverged in the early Eocene. The next notable family of cetaceans is Basilosaurus, which appeared in the late Eocene, about 40 million years ago, and they may have been the first fully aquatic cetaceans. 
Basilosaurs were one of the largest animals alive at the time, and they fed on sharks, large fish, and small cetaceans. The Archaeoceti went extinct in the late Oligocene, around 23 million years ago, but they're not completely gone. Some Archaeocets diverged in the Eocene, which gave rise to both pervorders and modern whales. The Odontocetes, or toothed whales, which include sperm whales, dolphins, belugas, and narwhales, and the Mystocetes, or baleen whales, which includes grey whales, humpback whales, and blue whales, among others. Today the blue whale is the largest animal alive on the planet, and for that matter, it's the largest animal that has ever existed, period. To think that its ancestors were once small hoofed animals about the size of a fox. Talk about humble beginnings. Today the only hint outside of DNA analysis of the whale's bizarre ancestry might be the presence of hind limb bones in modern whales. They are not completely vestigial as they are thought to be useful in mating, but their presence is still a holdover from the days when whales walked on land. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video I'd be very appreciative if you gave it a like. You can also follow this channel on social media, links in the description, to stay up to date on news and new announcements. Until next time, see ya.